welcome back to whatever this is that I do every week. Um, it's basically just a free form chat about knitting and the projects that I'm working on. Uh, a lot has happened actually in the last week. I'm excited to share. So just life update. My cat is out of quarantine. Um, I have a little kitten who had a parasite and she is out and about. I did have to shut the door because now that she's feeling better, she's kind of crazy. She literally catfished us into thinking she was a sweet little timid, quiet little cuddly baby kitten. And she is sweet and still cuddly sometimes, but she's not quiet. And she was just sick. So uh, she is doing things that kittens do, like running around, getting into everything, especially my yarn. So this is the spare bedroom where I keep my yarn stash and um, it's also a guest room. So I just thought I would shut the door and just keep her out of here for now. So um, I think that is the overall life update. Nothing really new to report. I hope to not have to share any news about my cat's bowel movements ever again on this podcast. So we'll just go ahead and get started. I'm drinking a sparkling water. It's a Waterloo Summer Berry. You look like the 4th of July. That's what that makes me think of. Makes me want a hot dog real bad. Anyway, <laughs> um, I am wearing the Ostiglia sweater by August Knits. Um, I do not believe that this is available yet. I test knitted this for a book and um, I don't think that it's published yet as far as I know. Um, it's a raglan construction. It was knit from the bottom up. This is what it looks like. She cute. Um, it is three strands of mohair. So I feel like I get on here and talk about, um, Hobie Diablo mohair all the time. That's what I made this out of. I had three different colors. So the way that I did the color shift was let's say we start with the sleeve here this is three strands of a rust color this one is two strands rust one strand pink dusty pink like a mauve almost this one is one strand rust two strands pink three strands pink one strand white two strands pink two strands white one strand pink and then all white. So I think it looks really cool. The pattern doesn't call for any color shifting, but I was like, if I'm gonna do a whole sweater in three strands of mohair and twisted rib, like I need something to like keep it going. So I asked August Knit if I could um, do something fun with the colors and she said, sure. So that is what I did. It took me uh, probably like two months to knit this, but I was really powering through it. Um, I think if I made this on my own time, it would have kind of been a more long-term project that I kind of worked on a little bit here and there because the twisted rib, it's a lot. It's knit on size eights, so that's nice because it does give you, you know, quite a thick gauge here. You know, since you've got all of that mohair and air, the three strands, but um, yeah, I would, if I were to knit something like this again, I would have something else going so I didn't get burned out. It has a folded collar, which is really cute. I really like that. The neckline is, I mean, it's not a boat neck and it's not a crew neck. It's like somewhere in between. Mine turned out just like the pattern suggested. So I think this is what she's going for. Excuse me, I shouldn't have had sparkling water. 
before I, I and during um, recording a podcast. Um, but yeah, I like it. It's comfy. I really like the colors. The back is just the same as the raglan de uh, detail on the back as well. It's cute. I really love the colors. It's very fun. I wish I would have worn this on Valentine's Day. I really didn't think about it. It would have been perfect. Um, okay. Now to the grand, not the finale, but the, the reason we're all here. Before I show you this spice cardi that I've been working on, um, I guess I'll do a quick recap. Um, I started this 20 days ago. <laughs> I had this crazy idea. Um, I was knitting a sweater for my husband that I ultimately decided that I hated working on and I wasn't confident that it was going to be something that my husband would wear and enjoy. And so I decided to frog it and start this Spice Cardi by Andrea Mowry. Um, I did go ahead and steak it, so drum roll please. Yee! I have no idea if I'm showing you the whole thing. Okay, so I still have not sewn the underarms, done any pockets, no collar. This thing gets a whole shawl collar so none of that is done but i did cut it and if you follow me on instagram if you don't you can follow me on instagram and we can chat and you can laugh because i give a lot more details about my knitting and it's often chaotic um you can add me on there my handle is at hey alexa knit uh, i'd love to have you as a friend so I pull my sewing machine out and I'm getting it ready to go. I am not a sewer, so I don't know any of the lingo, but I'm like threading my bobbin. That's the thing, right? And then, um, whatever. I'm getting it ready. I'm getting the machine ready to go. And I am like, this is not working. It's not picking up the, what am I trying to say? The machine, the top. The needle is not picking up the bobbin thread. That sounds like a thing. Um, I did figure out that that's what it was going on with it. And apparently my hook timing was off. So I had to Google a bunch and try to figure out how to fix it. And I did a pretty good job, I think. I mean, it ended up working. Like it started picking up the bobbin thread and it knit a very nice zigzag stitch for my steak reinforcement. So. I'm kind of proud of myself. There are not a lot of resources for my particular brand of Singer sewing machine. So it's old enough to not, I just told one of my friends online this, uh, it's old enough to not have a lot of resources and troubleshooting like helpful videos or PDFs or anything, but it's not old enough to have like sewing machine enthusiasts interested in it and it's not vintage or anything so nobody is like oh, this is the singer promise 1409 and let me tell you all the things about it and you know it's just in this little niche spot in time where it was a 99 dollars machine at some point <laughs> nobody wants it anymore and I don't think they sell it anymore again I don't really know but there wasn't much on the internet so proud of myself for fixing it happy that I could use it um I did briefly consider having to hand sew the reinforcement and this is a big sweater like that, that would have been a lot because you have to do it on both sides so I'll kind of give you a close-up here so since I'm not an avid sewer and I didn't trust myself to 
literally sew a straight line, I decided to steek a little further apart. So my reinforcement columns, where normally I would crochet reinforce the two rows directly adjacent to my steep column, I moved it out a row on each side. So because of that, when I steeped, I had more to, I had more that would unravel on each side of my sewn reinforcement. So I've got a whole bunch of frayed edges here, which is fine because I know I, um, like I, uh, I did this on purpose, like I unraveled the whole thing on purpose just so that I could make sure it was going to hold in because I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I don't know if I'm going to just, I'll probably trim these because they're pretty long. And you can see in my sewn reinforcement here, it's not really, it's not really focusing too well. But you can see that maroon thread, right? There you go. Um, anyway, I'm probably going to trim these. I don't know if I'm just going to whip stitch them down or if I'm going to put a tasteful manly ribbon on the inside. <laughs> probably not because we're leaving in a week from tomorrow for our trip and that's just one more thing for me to deal with and then I would have to use the sewing machine again and I'm just not into it. And... Yeah, so I'm probably just going to whip stitch these down at some point, give them a little trim, and that's going to be it. Honestly, I might not even whip stitch them. I might just trim them really short. Because you can see, this is like a really close-knit zigzag stitch. So I have no worries that this is going to come undone. So I think we'd be good. And then... um when I go around and pick up the collar, like, I don't know if you've steeped before, but the steek edge just naturally wants to curl in on itself. So like this would be the outside. And then this is just like naturally curling under itself. So when I pick up, I would pick up um, from this side of my reinforcement. And so that would just kind of lay flat in there and not be, not be really anybody's business. So <laughs> I might just leave it. Who knows? I mean, now all y'all know, all y'all know, but, and I know, but <laughs> who cares? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling. I have a lot to do. I have about eight days to knit. The rest of this and they there's some work days in there and I don't know I don't know how it's gonna go I'm I mean obviously I got a lot done and it's looking good and I'm inspired to finish of course I'm very motivated to finish but we'll just see we'll see if I'm motivated to do a whip stitch on the inside we'll see what it looks like uh if you're wondering why my hair is so crazy, I worked today and I put my hair up in a clip and I was hoping that if I like twisty dude it and just had it up in the clip, it would look cute and curly, but it looks like this. It's not that bad. It's fine. Um, oh, okay. So I do actually have another project to show you. I got my butt in gear and I started my knit along project that I'm doing with my friends Katie and Molly and I got our first goal done so our goal is to get the ribbing done this is the hem of the body of the sweater and it's about I think it's 18 rows um and this is sport weight so it took took a little bit of time the light shining through it so it's hard to tell the color but I absolutely love this yarn. It is so pretty. Um, when it is out in the daylight, it has so many different colors in it. It's really hard to pick up on it right now, but they're like, 
greens and purples and reds and I mean obviously like it reads brown but when you get right up on it, it has a lot of nuance and I love it so I actually finished this yesterday the absolute deadline <laughs> um like I said my friends are nice they wouldn't get mad at me if I didn't hit a deadline but I have this thing where I feel guilty about everything and I don't want to let anybody down so I got it done um the next thing that we're gonna do is so now that the hem is done we're gonna go this is the pressed flowers pressed flowers cardigan press flowers cardigan so um the next thing that we're gonna do is get three full flower repeats done so um we decided that was a good metric to hit next and i have a whole month to do it so it's gonna be fine we might move that up if everybody gets done and feels good about it but um i'm excited i'm excited to put some flowers in there and um as a reminder, I am using some minis that I had from a, um, a yarn club that I did. And I'm also holding that with mohair. So this will be my fuzzy flowers press cardi. And I actually, I keep looking off camera here because I have the yarns here that I'll show you real quick. So yeah i think this is the order that i want to do it in here it'll be these this looks like i don't really like how this looks but when i don't have the minis on hand when these are held with the minis it's gonna look really good just just trust the process So next thing is acquisitions. I'm really sorry if you can he hear the like a little gurgle noise for while that goes into my mouth. I'm sure that was real attractive. Okay, acquisitions. I bought in the Wandering Flock update this crazy skein and <laughs> this is not gonna look good on me. <laughs> I don't care. Um, so we really got into soccer last year because we have a soccer stadium and thus we have a soccer team in Nashville. Um, and we, yeah, we got really into going to the games. And so this year we got jerseys and I'm gonna make a hat um Nashville Soccer Club this is one of their colors so I think it'll be really fun it does not look good on me or with this hair but it's okay you don't have to always wear the colors that look good on us we don't always have to be surfing right <clears throat> Okay, the only other thing that I have to show you is okay, <laughs> a lot of buttons. Um, so I had to order some buttons for Shane's cardigan because I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't planning on buying, or not buy, buying, making a cardigan. So at first, I was like, okay, I'm going to get these buttons. And then I was getting them from Etsy, so I'm like, if I'm going to pay shipping on literal $4 of buttons, then I should just go ahead and get some buttons just to have. Which I know is probably one way that I am just being a little brat about not buying as much yarn. I'm like, okay, well, we'll just buy all the notions. That'll be fine. Anyway, I ended up with these buttons and well, I did look at the measurements for the buttons, but I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know. Um, they're too small. 
Uh, I'll hold it up to the cardigan. I took a picture for my friends and I showed my husband. My husband's like, it's fine. I'm like, it's not fine. And I sent it to my friends and they're like, it's not fine. Um, okay. Yeah, you can just see like they're little in the grand scheme of the cardigan. So in that lot of buttons, I also bought these really fun, let me try to arrange them little flower buttons. They're just resin buttons. And I bought them in four colors because why not? They were very inexpensive and they're just pretty and now I have buttons for days. Oh, I also got these buttons in that lot. They, these are just like some pretty, I don't even know what to call them, like sort of mother of pearl, but they're not like iridescent rainbowy colors. They're just white. And then these are actual mother of pearl buttons. So these are like the fun iridescent colors. This is probably weird, but this makes me think that if any of y'all had to take anatomy, did you have to dissect a cow eyeball? And if you did, does <laughs> this remind you of the back of the cow eyeball? They have that like reflective, I have no idea what I'm talking about. They have that reflective coating back behind, like inside of their eyeball, which allows them to be able to see at night and it's like it looks like this I, that's what I remember it was very I love animals and I do not like dissecting their body parts so I was like oh pretty that's what I'm gonna remember about this experience um anyway so the original buttons didn't work and I ordered all those buttons for nothing not for nothing because I'm gonna use them but they didn't work out and I have I have these all these buttons now that's fine so I ordered more buttons and they look like this so they're just bigger they're a little plainer they don't have like as much wood detailing on them they are wood buttons but you can see like it'll be more of a substantial button and then again I couldn't just pay four dollars to ship three dollars a button so I got these these are made out of coconut again very inexpensive but they're two different colors on each side very cool so yeah now I got a button stash luckily these are very small and easy to store. They were very inexpensive and I do feel like at some point I will use all of these. So it'll be nice to have choices when it comes to my next cardigan. And I do have a few tops in my stash for summer that have some button detailing that goes down this way. Um, the one that I'm really excited about is the cottage core crop. And I forget who makes it. Look on Ravelry. I'm horrible. I should have looked it up. Um, I think it's Mezzo Makes. I don't know what her name in real life is, but I think it is. Anyway, really excited to make that. I showed the pattern to my husband and I was like, isn't this cute? And he was like, it's not for me. He He's always like, kind and is like I don't like that but he, he won't be like I really don't like that you shouldn't make it he'll be like it's not my favorite <laughs> all right that's it for acquisitions um let's see what else can I show you I am hoping to participate in the DRK March to May knit along so that's the Andrea Mowry knit along um 
I have several of her older patterns in my queue that I'm excited to make. I have one shawl and I think three sweaters that are just sitting. I have the yarn for them. I'm ready to go. I just need the time and the bandwidth to get around to do it. So I am at this point probably leaning towards doing the stripes sweater. I'm just in between this and the pressed flowers, which is also going to be color work, and my great gingham, which is also color work. I'm just craving just plain stockinette. Um, I'm also excited to learn how to do a jogless stripe, so that'll be a new technique for me. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be fun. I don't have it all in front of me. I have, so I think I need eight colors for my size and I have a lot of them right here. So here's six of the colors that I plan to use. This is Ca uh, Cascade 220 Sport. If you've been here for a minute, you know that I love Cascade 220. So this is just another one in their line. I also have Cascade 220 or is it still called? So I have Cascade 220 fingering. I have the original 220. I'm using the 220 Superwash for this. I just heard a really loud noise. My kitten just knocked something over. I have to go check on that. Hold on one second. Okay, very concerning. I could not find what she knocked over. It was so loud. Like, it was a... It sounded like several things knocked over, like possibly glass. I'm very concerned. <laughs> we have most of like the uh, the rooms off of the, our main hallway closed, so like she could only be in the living room, the kitchen, or the dining room. And I checked all of those, and everything appears to be absolutely fine. Now that I'm thinking about it, I just assumed it was the cat and it could have been the rabbits, but I haven't heard anything since that happened, so I think everything's fine, I hope. Okay, very distracted. <laughs> anyway, I am going to be working with these for the striped sweater. I also have a maroon, so something a little bit darker than this, and then like a I think it's like a tangerine color, so something a little brighter, lighter orange than this one here. So it's kind of just a fun little color palette, I think. I had just bought these at random and just, I don't know, because I was wasteful and I felt like I just wanted a bunch of these and I really like this yarn. So I'm going to make something out of it, and I am going to participate in the March May Knit Along. Obviously, I am entering this guy because you can enter whips. Um, normally, I would feel weird about entering a, you know, almost, I put in air quotes and with asterisks, um, and footnotes because <laughs> I'm saying it's almost finished, but I do have a quite a bit of work to do. But anyway, I would normally feel kind of weird about being like, oh, yeah, I'm going to submit this to the knit along because it's so far along into it. But since I started this 20 days ago, I feel like it is more than fair to enter this in the knit along, especially since I could have, you know, by the time that this is done, it'll have been... I think 30 days, so four weeks and two days. So I could absolutely have knit this within the three months that the March to May knit along is going on. So I think it's fair and valid and I am going to enter it. And I posted it on Ravelry and realized that the only time that I participate in forums is to do the March to May knit along. So. Yay. Um, as far as cast-ons go, I will probably take this with me to Colorado when we go. 
because this guy will be done. And I just don't fancy bringing any of my current projects with me. I just want something easy. Um, I almost would bring the stuff to start my stripes with me because it's just easy knitting. All I have to do is count rows and, you know, figure out my stripes and all that. But I think it would be, I don't know, I'm just really excited about it. Other options would be, uh, this is coming for sure. Other options would be to cast on like a little cowl. I have an Andrea Mowry cowl in my queue too that I could make. And I've got stuff to make mittens, so I could do that too. That would be a fun project. And then of course I could cast on some socks like I've been wanting to for forever. I've only ever made one pair of socks. Um, I've just made mostly sweaters, so I think that would be fun to get into socks. I've never made mittens. Um, yeah, done a lot of socks and hats and, or not socks, sweaters and hats. So it'd be fun to branch out. Oh, my, not my friend, my cousin is having a baby and she's not finding out the gender, but she has asked me to make a sweater for the baby so I'll be waiting until the baby is born in June kind of you know figure out which way we want to go with the sweater design um but that will be my first baby clothing that I'm making so I'm really excited um I can definitely see where baby knitting would be super um rewarding because it's so small and so like you do some shaping and then you do a little bit of the body and then next thing you know you're doing sleeves and you just be done so I'm excited for that I would ideally like to make something else for her for her baby shower which is in late April so I've got about two months to kind of stew on that um if you have if you're watching and you have any baby patterns that you really like and especially that are not gender conforming since I don't know what she's going to be having. Um, I'd really love to know about them. So either send me a message on my Instagram or put a comment on this video and I will definitely be looking to check those out because I don't know where to start. I don't know who makes good baby patterns. <laughs> um, if you have free patterns, that'd be great too. I'm not, I mean, I'm totally into paying for the pattern too. That's not, you know, it doesn't have to be free, but just send me what you got. Send me that, what you like, what's tried and true. Um, and I'll look at them all and try to figure out what I'm going to do. Oh, also, if you have a yarn that you really like, to use for baby clothes. I'd love to know about that too. I'm worried about wool sensitivities in babies. I don't know if that's like a very common thing, but just in my very limited research, that seems like something that I probably want to avoid. Um, so if you have like a acrylic that you really like and, or I guess maybe, I don't, I don't know. Just tell me, tell me what to do. I don't know. Tell me. I need help. Um, yeah, so those are some of the things that are just kind of coming down the pipeline right now, the knitting pipeline. <laughs> um, so yeah, not, not too much to report, but yeah, I, I feel like I should update on my Reddit journey. So I've traded a few more things, sold a few more things. It's still going good, still all good experiences. Um, everybody's been prompt in confirming their trades. You kind of put like a little thing up that says, hey, I traded with this person, and then they say confirmed, and then they, um, the Reddit bots just like update your user flyer so that it shows how many trades you've done and kind of gives you like Reddit knitter street cred, I guess. Um, but yeah, everybody's been super prompt and honest and I haven't had any problems still. And of course I'll let you know if that changes, but I think that I'm getting near the end of the things that I'm willing to let go of. 
So I do have those few things that are still hanging out out there that I would get have gotten rid of, but um, kind of come to terms again that I'm not going to sell them and I am feeling good to donate them. So I'm going to give them to my local discount art store. Um, I think that I'm going to take them to Turnip Green. So I've only been there one time, but basically how it works is they take any craft supply donations, they take yarn, they take anything you can think of that falls under the craft umbrella, including like tile samples, like flooring samples. There's like all everything you could ever think of. If you wanted to make a dollhouse, this would be just the perfect place to go to get everything that you need to deck out a dollhouse. That's not like something that's in my crafting journey, but I absolutely love to watch others who do things like that. So um, if you're in the Nashville area or if you're visiting, that would be a great place to go and get very, very low cost supplies for fixing up a dollhouse. Um, where was I going with that? Oh, so Turnip Green, the way that it works is you can go in there, you pick out what you want, you bring it up to the register, and you tell them how much you think is fair to pay. So obviously that goes on the honor system and should not be abused. And if you can afford to pay for your crafting supplies at a fair rate, then you should absolutely do so. But I love the idea that somebody who doesn't have, you know, much to give and is in a is on a tight budget can go in there and just give what they can and get what they would like to use for crafting. So, excuse me, I'm really excited to give my stuff to Turnip Cream because I think that somebody who could really use it could end up with the yarn. And like I said, nothing that I'm getting rid of is trash. Like I wouldn't, if, if it was garbage, it would be in the garbage. Um, I don't like wasting things but I know the value of things and I would not just give trash that I didn't want or things that I didn't think had any value um, to turn up green or any other charity. So um, yeah, I'm excited to that somebody who could really use it could get their hands on it. So that's going to be something that I need to take care of probably not till we get back from our trip because I'm just... Pedal to the metal with this <sighs> sweater. <laughs> I am really excited to finish this. I, For the first time, I am kind of hitting a plateau with it, though, motivation-wise. Um, I think it was a race to the steak. And now that the steak is done, and it was such like a... I didn't really talk much about it, but... Once I did finally get the sewing machine fixed, I was just like, I don't know, have you been here? Like, something is so challenging and frustrating and you're just like, Ugh! for so long that when you finally get it fixed and it's late and you know that this is the last thing that you have to do before you go to bed so that you can rest, you just get it done. <laughs> So that's kind of what I did. I just like powered through this. Did I care what happened to it? Of course, but did I care less than I would have if I had gotten my sewing machine out of the box that it stays in and it had been working immediately? <laughs> no. No. Um, so I just really powered through this and I was just like, let's just get it done, please. And now that I have gotten this part of the sweater done, I am just remembering from my spark cardi how long it takes to pick up the collar and button band. You start down here, you go all the way up, you go all the way around the back of the collar, and you go all the way down. Or no, you come here and you do short rows and make the shawl collar for like 52 times 52 short rows it's a lot so 
and then I believe that you come back down and then you come back up and like you know <laughs> so anyway it's gonna take forever and I gotta make some buttonholes and get these pockets done and it's gonna be a lot you know what could happen though is I could still take this almost finished to Colorado like we could have some faux pockets we could have a not quite whip stitch interior but still have the shawl collar and like the pocket ribbing here that creates the I don't know what I'm trying to say. That creates the illusion of pockets. That could happen. We might do everything except for the actual pockets and the whip stitching and then see where we're at. That might be what we do. I feel like I'm missing something too. Oh, of course we're gonna sew up the underarms. Although, the ventilation, think of it. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so yeah, those are the plans. That's where we're at. Feeling good about all of it can't wait to go on our trip. I am nervous about leaving our kitten. We do have a pet sitter and I trust her and feel good about her being here, but it's just kind of, kind of sad to leave the baby after only having her for like a month. So she'll be fine though. I'm just an anxious cat mom. I'm also worried about the state of my house when I return, but it's okay. <laughs> um, I hope that you have an excellent week and that you enjoyed hearing about my projects and hopefully laughing along with this chaotic journey that I'm on with this sweater. Um, yeah, let me know about baby clothes and baby yarns. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, any experience or even if you haven't knit anything for a baby, but you saw something really cute, I would like to know about it. I hope that, again, I hope you have a good week and that you get a lot of time to work on your projects and that everybody's kind to you and you're as kind to everybody as you can be. Bye!